12 risk factors for atherosclerosis. So in this video, let us see what are the 12 risk factors that can be responsible for the induction of atherosclerosis. First of all, let us see what is atherosclerosis. So suppose this is a normal blood vessel and this is a blocked blood vessel. And now this blood vessel is going to be blocked by formation of etheroma, a fibrous cap which is formed within the blood vessel. Because of this etheroma, the blood supply is going to be blocked within the blood vessel. And this etheroma is because of the increased LDL levels in the serum which can increase the formation of the etheroma which can block the blood vessel. So this process what we call atherosclerosis, narrowing of the blood vessel because of the formation of Etheroma. Now let us see the 12 risk factors which are responsible for the atherosclerosis. So let us start one by one. The first one is the hypertension. So when the patient is having the blood pressure greater than 140 by 90, then what we can call hypertension. And whenever a high blood pressure is there in the patient, this produces the more pressure on the blood vessel wall, which can cause the more stress on the walls of the blood vessel. Because of high pressure on the blood vessel wall, it can cause the loss of elasticity of the blood vessel wall, which can cause some dysfunction in the blood vessels. And when there is a dysfunction of this uh, vascular smooth muscle and endothelium, it may cause the formation of etheroma and it can induce the atherosclerosis. In this way, a patient having the high blood pressure for longer periods may produce atherosclerosis because of the dysfunction of the the walls of the blood vessels and second risk factor is the obesity obesity is measured by body mass index that is bmi which is given as the weight in kg divided by square of the height in terms of meters so your body mass index if it is between 18.5 to 24.9 then it is called as normal and if it is from the 25.0 to the 29.9, then the person is having the overweight. And when it is greater than 30, the person is called as obese. So the risk of atherosclerosis increases with the high body mass index. And the patients who are overweight as well as obese will have the more risk for the atherosclerosis. So it's always better to maintain the body mass index less than 25 so that we can prevent the atherosclerosis. Third one is the diabetes. So di diabetes may be either of type 1 and type 2. So in the type 1 there is a lack of insulin but in the type 2 there is a reduced release of the insulin as well as there is increased resistance to the insulin action. So any of these mechanisms may cause a raised glucose levels within the blood which may cause uh, some deleterious effects on the other organs. So when the glucose levels are abnormally raised and they are not controlled, then they can affect the other organs like the heart, neurons and kidney. So glucose can affect these organs and can affect their functionality. So suppose when the heart is not working properly, it may result in the reduced blood flow to the systemic organs. And when there is a reduced blood flow, it may increase the formation of atheroma. So in this way, diabetes can increase the glucose levels, which can induce the atherosclerosis. So it is better to control the diabetes such that glucose levels are within the normal limits, thereby atherosclerosis can be prevented. Fourth risk factor is the lipids in diet. Of course, this is the one of the risk factor which is directly well familiar with the atherosclerosis. So fatty foods can increase the cholesterol as well as triglycerides within the body and both cholesterol and triglycerides may cause the formation of atheroma. Of course the risk is more with the cholesterol compared with the triglycerides but triglycerides can also contribute to the total cholesterol thereby they can also increase the risk of the atheroma. So we should take the diet which is less in the lipids and more in the fibers such that the lipid intake can be controlled. And at the same time, if carbohydrates are going to be taken in excess with the replacement of lipids. These carbohydrates can also be converted to lipids within the body, which can further increase the atherosclerosis. So it is better to take the diet which is rich in the fibers and with carbohydrates at an optimal level. Fifth risk factor is the lack of exercise. 
so sedentary lifestyle will cause less mobility in the people for longer periods and when there is less mobility it may cause a less utilization of the fats thereby the fats are not going to be burning which cause the accumulation of the fat in the body so when the fat is accumulated one of the bad cholesterol ldl may increased within the blood which may cause the atherosclerosis and this factor is a modifiable risk factor so by increasing the exercise we can easily control the the lipids within the body thereby we can prevent the atherosclerosis and sixth risk factor is the stress stress can induce the generation of these free radicals and these free radicals are highly damaging and once these free radicals are generated they can cause an oxidative damage to the cells and stress can also inhibit the protective mechanisms thereby it can further increase the oxidative damage so we can use the antioxidants to control the oxidative damage by scavenging the free radicals but we cannot assure that antioxidants can completely prevent the atherosclerosis so diet rich in the antioxidants is have a positive effect but it may not always uh, prevent the atherosclerosis so stress can be controlled by psychologically as well as by physiologically by intake of uh, some antioxidant seventh one is the c reactive protein so when there is an inflammation in the body it increases the c react protein levels within the body so that's why c react to protein is acting as a biomarker for the inflammation case of atherosclerosis c react to protein levels may be increase again this risk factor cannot confirm that if c react to protein levels are increase it may lead to atherosclerosis even there is no good relation between these two an elevated c react to protein levels may increase the the generation of the atheroma eighth risk factor is the chronic alcoholism it is interesting fact that occasional alcoholism such as uh, less than once a week uh, intake can decrease the atherosclerosis at the same time a chronic alcoholism such as regular intake can increase the atherosclerosis so when a patient is in the chronic alcoholism the ldl levels may be increased and hdl levels may be decreased so in this way a bad cholesterol is going to be accumulated within the body with the decrease in the levels of the good cholesterol which may generate the atherosclerosis ninth risk factor is the smoking smoking may increase the ldl levels within the body as well as it can increase the risk generation of the other factors so it is better to control the smoking in order to prevent the effect of the other risk factors on the atherosclerosis and 10th one is the family history this is one of the important risk factor so either maternal or paternal that is from the either mother or father side if any history of cardiovascular problems are existing then there is a chance that uh, the patient may have the risk of the atherogenesis and within such patient if ldl levels are increased it may result in the atheroma formation if suppose cardiovascular problems exist from the both maternal and paternal side there will be more risk for the atherosclerosis but one of the limitation is that we cannot give any guarantee that uh, the patients having the family history of uh, cardiovascular problems always can result in the atherosclerosis 11th one is the gender so males are having the more risk for uh, atherosclerosis compared with the females and 12th one is the age so males with age greater than 45 years and females with age greater than 55 years are having the more risk for the atherosclerosis so these are the 12 risk factors which increases the formation of the atheroma within the blood vessels which blocks the blood supply thereby it can produce the other cardiovascular complication and among these the important risk factors are hypertension diabetes and uh, obesity other risk factors like uh, stress lipids in the diet family history gender and age may also impact the atherosclerosis so that's about the various risk factors that can induce the atherosclerosis in the patients